really hot day. I think I might overdid it a little bit. I'm back out on the Spear hiking trail. Woo! Making a big climb right away. I'm on the top of Wolf Rock. So this trip, it's a hot summer weekend. I am uh, going about 33 miles on a two and a half day hike from Castle Danger up to Silver Bay. It's gonna get hot in the afternoons, so I'm gonna try to Cruise a little bit in the morning here. Beat the heat. Come on, let's go. On day one, I walked 16 and a half miles from Castle Danger along the Gooseberry River and Falls and climbed Blueberry Hill before camping near Split Rock River for the night. I've come to Gooseberry Falls State Park. This is not the main falls of Gooseberry Falls, but Gooseberry Falls is one of the most popular state parks in Minnesota, especially during COVID now. So we'll see what happens when I get down to the main tourist area. But it's still very beautiful today. Ugh, there are a lot of people here. It's time to get the hell out of here. All right, I could tell it was right after lunchtime because there were a lot of freaking kids that missed their naps down there. Holy crap. Oh, the fun continues. As you can hear, Spear Hiking Trail is on a semi-permanent reroute here where I've got to walk along the highway here. There's a nice bike path, but uh, I got a road walk for three or four miles before I catch back up with the trail. So I need to uh, find some shade. If I remember right, there's a picnic table up here where I can grab some lunch. Right behind me there is Lake Superior. I found my picnic table halfway through the road walk. Get some shade, nice breeze coming in off the lake. No screaming kids. Sitting here having some lunch, having some beef sticks, some Doritos. Doritos and beef sticks are my favorite lunch on the trail. If you'd like to see some other easy and cheap lunches while backpacking, check out this video right up here. Spoiler, Doritos and beef sticks are the best. So, I go down in the lake. There's a nice beach down there. But I still have about six miles to go today. And I want to get to camp. There is a little river right next to my camp. So, I should be able to wash off in that when I get there. So, got a long ways to hike. It's getting pretty warm. But I can't wait to get off this road walk because I know there's some nice views from on top of the uh, hills or mountains coming up here. What the hell is that? Oh, I think I'm gonna keep my eyes this way, not look down there. Okay, I finally got to Highway 61, where I have to cross back over into the woods. So, uh, 
you can see, it's a busy day up here. I thought it was kind of funny though that as I did finally get to the highway here, the theme music from Star Wars comes on. Kind of pumped me up. I'm not a Star Wars nerd, but uh, it gave me a little juice, so. Trying to figure out where to go. Whew. Forgot once uh, we got up Highway 61, I had another mile and a half on a forestry road. And it was pretty open to the sun, but now I'm back in the woods. There's some shade in here. I'm drinking lots of water. Uh, I think I'm gonna go up a big hill here. It'll be nice once I get up there. There's a view of the lake and hopefully a nice breeze. Whew. All right, green tunnel. Oh, really hot day. Road walk. Why am I doing this? Whew. Oh, that's why I'm doing this. Lake Superior. Nice breeze, nice sunny day, no screaming kids. Whoo, but it's not free. Man, that was a good workout. I think I figured out why they call it Blueberry Hill. Come to the Split Rock Loop. Now, on the west side of this loop, there is a bridge that's been washed out for probably four or five years, and they've just said that they're not going to replace it. You come by in the spring, the water's too deep, so I've never actually been able to take this loop, loop all the way around. So uh, the water should be low enough today. I'm going to go up around. There's a couple campsites on this side, a couple campsites on the other side. Hopefully cross the river, take one of the campsites on the other side, and uh, camp out for the night. The Split Rock River is gorgeous. Beautiful waterfalls. Some right down here as well. This is the uh, river that I'm going to have to cross, probably about another mile up up the river here but uh, it's very beautiful and I'm pretty sure I'm going to be able to cross up there. stopped and talked to some people over on the other side of the river at a campsite and they gave me some good intel that the best crossing for the river wasn't up at the very end past the bridges it was probably a quarter of a mile up from the campsite where uh, you saw me cross very easily I hiked about another 200 yards farther north to come to this campsite so I'm exhausted I'm going to set up my hammock, get everything set up, and then I'm going to go back down by the river and make my dinner, take a swim, relax down there, because honestly this campsite isn't anything special up here. What I want to be at is by the river. It's a pretty long day. Days like that, you kind of question, why do I like backpacking? And then something like this happens. I am soaking my feet 
earlier I had my whole body in here. It's kind of like my own personal jacuzzi with the jets powered by God in the river here. So it's the Split Rock River at sunset alone. These jets are just as powerful as my hot tub. Feels really good for a aching body. Behind me here, I'm boiling some water for dinner. On day two, I walked 12 and a half miles from the Split Rock River through many ridges and creeks until settling in along the Beaver River. morning. It's a little cooler today. It's supposed to rain this afternoon, so I tried to get an early start. Uh, a little cooler, but it is still super humid. I've walked about a mile and a half. This side of the split rock loop is definitely a little easier to walk and uh, a little bit more interesting with uh, obviously being on top of the mountain over here and getting some views. So uh, it's a good hike so far. I'm going to keep on moving because, like I said, it's supposed to rain this afternoon. Maybe, just maybe I can get to camp before that happens. But you can see there's a neat little cabin over here. Humidity's got me sweating a little bit, taking a little bit of a break. I came to one of the most photographed items in the entire state of Minnesota. We are a long ways away from it, but if you look closely in the distance, you can see the Split Rock Lighthouse right over there. Made it to a little lookout here. Pretty uh, tired from all the sweating, so I decided to stop and take a little break. Probably have five and a half miles to go. Uh, light rain, but just still real muggy. So I'm gonna have a little snack. Let my heart slow down, catch my breath, and keep on moving. I hiked this section a year ago or two years ago. I didn't remember a lot of details other than it really kicked my butt. And uh, the reason is there's a very uneven footpath, lots of rocks and lots of roots. And there are the hills, but not that isn't what's terrible. And then you get into a lot of this where it's overgrown. So while it may be shorter mileage, it's definitely a difficult section that uh, takes a little bit of time and a lot of effort. Whew. Fault Line Creek campsite. Whew. I gotta go up a big hill now. One of the benefits of backpacking alone is you're a little bit quieter. You can be a little stealthier. When I get to places like this, I like to go real quiet hoping to see some wildlife. It looks like today all I'm gonna see is some ducks. All right, I've been walking along Fault Line Ridge away from Lake Superior. I'm just looking back now If you look closely down there, you can see that pond that is right above 
fault line creek and you can't really see it today because it's overcast but the white kind of at the v there is lake superior big wind coming in There's supposed to be a storm rolling through here in a couple hours i want to get to camp and set up before that comes through but i'm just enjoying that wind it's all hot and muggy it is Woo, that feels good all right a little update here you can see i'm still walking along fault line ridge lake superior over there nice view over here i can see if i look down real close down there i can see a road and a railroad track and uh i know i gotta cross that road right before i get to the beaver river and the railroad tracks goes right next to the campsite so so it's within sight. Whew. All right, we're getting close to Beaver River. Came across three hikers. One of them recognized me, so you know the rule. If you recognize me, you got to be in my video. What's your name? I'm Carrie. Carrie and... Sarah. And... Courtney. Courtney. <laughs> they camped at Beaver Pond last night. Got some, uh, hopefully you didn't get uh, the, the jar. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Might have. No, we felt it. <laughs> <laughs> is it me or is it really hot out today? It's, it's humid. just very humid, yeah. It's very humid. Yeah. All right. I'm getting hungry and running out of water. I'll see you up at the campsite. All right. Okay. Cool. <laughs> okay, so I was kind of whooped before I saw those hikers there and hiking pretty slow. And someone recognizes me. And I'm like I shot out of a can in here. I feel pressure. I need to hike fast. But uh, feeling pretty good. I passed and one of the gals was hiking behind me. She says, you're soaked. Is that all from sweat? I said, yeah. I think I've been covered in sweat for the last two days. Whew. Oh my God. Oh. I mean, it's the highway here by Beaver Bay. Ooh, I think I might have overdid it a little bit. I told you I'm not very good with heat. Now my friends in Kentucky and Ohio may make fun of me for this like I make fun of them for thinking that 20 degrees is cold. Probably about 80, 85 degrees, but it's super humid, which is too hot for this Minnesota boy. Kind of see from the sign up above me. Sign just kind of screwed up around here. Pretty sure it's probably about 12 miles back to where I started. The signs are a little screwed up where it said where I left 11 miles and then I hiked like a mile and a half and it said 10 and a half miles and I don't know. It doesn't really matter. It's as far as it takes to get there, right? So I only have about half a mile up to the campsite. I was debating just doing the next four and a half miles driving home today. Probably not a very wise decision, even how I feel right now. But now that I stop hiking and the wind's blowing, it's not too bad. We'll see. I gotta rest here a little bit though. Sitting there taking my break. Looked at my phone for the weather again. It says it wasn't supposed to start raining now till six o'clock. Stood up, started walking, started raining. Go figure. Woo! Ah. I've never been so happy to be walking in the rain. Should have brought some shampoo and some soap because stink a little bit. Woo! All right, I see the bridge for the river right, right up ahead. Turn right at the bridge. Campsite, just a 
hop, skip, and a jump right over the puddles to the campsite there. So we'll see you there. So I made my way past the first Beaver Bay campsite, came to the second Beaver Bay campsite, and I was gonna filter some water, uh, and I was debating moving forward and finishing today. But as I sat here waiting, uh, started to not feel that great. So I set up my hammock, went and had a little siesta. Feeling a little better right now, don't have much of an appetite though. So I'm gonna filter some water now, camp out here tonight. Uh, I see rain, there's a chance of rain coming in in about another hour or so. So I'm gonna do everything that I can before that rain starts, but uh, this is a beautiful campsite. I'll, I'll walk down by the river here and show you guys uh, what it looks like. On day three, I walked three and a half miles from the Beaver River to the Penn Boulevard trailhead in Silver Bay. Back on the trail, man, shit. All right, leaving the Beaver Bay campsite. Whew. Uh, last night I didn't have an appetite. My stomach was still playing some tricks on me. So I didn't eat dinner. Woke up this morning with an appetite, so that was a good thing. Broke down camp. Took down half a green belly bar. Now my stomach feels pretty good. Um, it's about four miles out to my car this morning at Penn Boulevard, but uh, it's mostly uphill. So it's not gonna be easy. So, but the good news is it's not so super humid yet. So let's go get it. Well, that didn't take long to get my sweat on. Came up to a nice overlook here. Decided I'm gonna take a break already. I got four miles to go and I wanna pace myself, so. We made it. Penn Avenue parking lot, trailhead. Whew. Hope you enjoyed this video from your nice air conditioned couch. But uh, thanks for coming along. Note to some future self, I'm not gonna go backpacking in summer anymore. July specifically when it's this hot and humid. But uh, yeah, definitely type two fun, but I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and hit subscribe. Hit that bell notification. They'll tell you when I put out a new video. Check me out on Instagram and Facebook. Here's another video you may like. Thanks for coming along. We'll see you on the trail.